Hey guys, this is Mrs. Hammer again. Today we're going to be learning about the pH scale. It's probably a little bit of review and we'll also have some new information about how to actually calculate pH. And we'll also see something called the pOH scale. So that's what we have on the schedule. Let's get started. Okay, so our goal for today is to understand and be able to perform calculations for the pH and the pOH scales. You might already be a little bit familiar with the pH scale. Essentially, the pH scale is a way that we can use relatively simple numbers, 0 to 14, to um, describe the acidic or basic nature of a solution. So, you might, again, already be familiar with um, a pH of 7 is a neutral solution, okay? If the pH is lower than 7, we say that the solution is acidic, and if it's greater than 7, we say that it's basic, or another word for that that you might want to add into your notes is alkaline, if I could spell it right, alkaline. So we can have an acidic or alkaline solution and the pH would indicate which one it is. So again here's a visual, 7 right in the middle is neutral. If we're above 7 we have an acid solution and the farther we get from 7 that we're increasing the acidity. So we see that um, you know like normal rainwater is slightly acidic but not too much versus battery acid we're pretty familiar with that being as a very um, concentrated very acidic solution and then again on the other side of the scale greater than seven we have our bases so things like baking soda sea water they are alkaline solutions but not to a great degree so they're greater than seven but not too far off versus things like ammonia or lye which will actually burn you and they're very 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 high on the scale closer to 14. So how do we actually calculate pH? Um, because the hydrogen ions make something acidic the more hydrogen ions there are the more acidic it is and therefore the pH would be lower okay um, but the thing is the the molar concentrations of hydrogen are usually really really small numbers like maybe 2 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, okay? And they're just hard to compare if you have two different solutions. And so we're going to take that concentration of the hydrogen ion and do something to it and put it into this pH scale. And again, it just makes it easier to interpret. You know, if you know where you are in the pH scale, you understand how close you are to neutral. So our main formula for today is this one right here. In order to calculate the pH, we're going to take the negative log function of the hydrogen ion concentration. The brackets here indicate molarity, okay? So again, if we know that a solution has 1 times 10 to the negative fifth molar hydrogen ion, so that's the moles per liter of hydrogen ions floating around in a solution, that's the concentration of hydrogen, we just take that number and plug it in right there. So we're going to negative log it, okay? So grab your calculator, we're going to type in negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So let's get to our little calculator guy, okay? So do the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative fifth and we see that we get 5. And if you understand logs, you probably could have done this one in your head. Um, but we will be working with some more complicated numbers um, moving forward. But that's the basic idea. If you know the hydrogen ion concentration, you negative log it, and that's your pH. So our pH back on here is 5. So this would be an acid because the pH is lower than 7. All right, so just give yourself a chance, if you need to, to practice um, doing some negative log calculations. So um, feel free to pause this and calculate um, the pH of these different solutions. All of these are the molarity of hydrogen ion. So basically to get the pH of any of these you're going to negative log it and that's your pH. Okay, So feel free to pause and practice with your calculator, get your answers, and then when you hit play we'll check them. So if you did choose to practice you should get these as your answers right here. Okay. You might be wondering about the sig figs at this point, okay? Um, you might notice that this has two sig figs to start with, but it looks like we ended with three. Same thing here. It looks like we have two sig figs to start with and we ended with four. So we need to talk about the sig figs. Basically, when you're looking at a pH value, okay, and you have some digits in front of the decimal and you have some digits after the decimal, 
only the digits after the decimal count as sig figs. Okay, so it's kind of a strange rule. It has to do with what the log means, but um, for practical purposes, you just need to know the rule after the decimal are the only ones that count when you're talking about a p value, pH. So this really does only have two sig figs, so it does match what we started with. Same thing here. This has two sig figs. The first one probably didn't look like a discrepancy anyway because you started with one sig fig and you ended with one, but technically we are still following the rule that only the digits after the decimal count. Okay, so Another thing we need to understand about pH is what it really means, okay? Um, basically, you need to understand that a change of one pH unit, so going from like a pH of um, 5 to 6 or something like that, or I guess um, 5 to 4, represents a tenfold change in hydrogen concentration, okay? So on this one, if we have 1 times 10 to the negative fifth and you negative log it, the pH is 5. If we multiply that by 10, we get 1 times 10 to the negative 4 and the pH is only changed by one unit, okay? So if you multiply the pH, or sorry, if you multiply the hydrogen concentration by 10, so you have 10 times as much hydrogen, the pH only goes down by one unit, okay? And again, if you understand logs and base 10 and all of that, you probably understand that relationship better. All right, so the pOH scale. The pOH scale is just kind of the backwards cousin of the pH scale. Um, it's, it's literally just backwards. So pH of seven is still neutral, but the acid and alkaline regions just switch places. So if you are, again, a visual person and you want a number line, if you have zero down here, seven in the middle, and 14 up here for the pOH scale, they're just backwards. So over here is your acid range, and down here is your alkaline range. Okay, so it's just backwards. So in order to calculate this pOH, it's, it's pretty darn similar to calculating pH. We're just replacing hydrogen with hydroxide. So to calculate pOH, we just take the negative log of the OH molarity. Okay, so if you know the OH molarity, put in your calculator with a negative log, and there's your pH. Okay, so let's do a couple of practice problems. Um, these are the OH concentrations. We want to know if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. So we're going to take these values, and we're going to negative log them, and we're going to determine what the pOH is. And then from there, we can think about the pOH scale and know if it's um, acidic, basic, or neutral. So 5.5 times 10 to the negative 6, we're going to negative log that. So negative log 5.5 times 10 to the negative 6. So our um, pOH is 5.2596, but again, if we round it to the right number of sig figs, we started with 2, so we want 2, so 5.26 is going to be our pOH, so 5.26. And the way that I think about this is I think about if this was a pH, and we had a pH of 5, it would be an acid, but the pOH scale is backwards, so pOH less than 7 that makes this a base solution, okay? So feel free to pause the video, try these other two practice problems, jot down your answer, and we're, when you hit play, we will check our answers. So checking our answers, um, the first one we already calculated was a base, the second one ends up being an acid, and the uh, last one is neutral. All right. We need to understand a key relationship between pH and pOH, okay? It's a really easy relationship, and it's really easy math. Uh, essentially, they always add up to 14 for any given solution. So if you have a beaker, and you know that the pH is 4, for that same exact solution in that same beaker, the pOH has to equal 10. So that's a pretty easy relationship there. For any given solution, they always have to add up to 14. All right, so again, here's a pretty easy problem. If the pOH is 12. 5, 3, what's the pH? So we're going to do 14 minus 12.53. And we get 1.47. So the pH equals 1.47. And then we want to know if it's acidic or basic or alkaline. Um, pH less than 7, always go back to the pH scale. If you know both of them, pOH and pH, and you're trying to say if it's acid or base, Look at the pH, because that's the one you probably already knew. Um, pH less than 7, it's an acid. Okay. All right. Finally, how do we go the other way? If we know the pOH or pH, so we know the pH value already, 
How can we go back to the concentration? Okay. Um, again, if you understand logs and how to undo a negative log, this should make sense to you. You move the negative over and then you undo the log with a um, 10 to the power of pH. Um, so these are the two formulas that you need to know. This is essentially undoing the negative log to get us back to the concentration of hydrogen or hydroxide. So if you know the pH and you want to know the hydrogen concentration, you do 10 to the negative pH. If you know the pOH and you want to get back to hydroxide concentration, you do 10 to the negative pOH, okay? So these are our last two formulas that we need to understand. So let's do some practice, okay? What is the hydrogen ion concentration? That's our question mark. If we know that the pH is 3.4. So again, our formula hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative pH. So that's going to be 10 to the negative 3.4, okay? So we go back to our calculator clear 10 raised to the power of negative 3.4 and we get um, this big old number right here if you think about sig figs um, the pH only the digit after the decimal was significant so we really only have one sig fig here so I'm going to round this answer to 4 times 10 to the negative 4 so that's going to be our answer the hydrogen ion concentration is 4 times 10 to the negative 4 and it was a concentration so that takes us back to molar so that was our hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, don't forget the units. Here's another one. What's the P or sorry, what's the OH concentration if the pH is 8.92? So OH is our question mark. So write down the formula for how we're going to solve for that in the end. The only formula we know for OH concentration is 10 to the negative pOH. Well, we don't know the pOH, we only know the pH so far. So we need to think of the other relationship too. Um, if we want to know the pOH to do our final con um, calculation, it's going to be 14 minus pH. So let's do that calculation first. 14 minus 8.92. We get 5.08. So our pOH is 5.08. And so that's what we're going to plug in right here. So the OH concentration is 10 to the negative pOH, so 10 to the negative 5.08. And so let's go back to our calculator and solve. 10 raised to the power of negative 5.08. So there's our answer. And finally, let's think about sig figs. Our initial measurement pH had two digits after the decimal place. That means it has two sig figs. So we're going to round this to 8.3 times 10 to the negative 6. So 8. 0.3 times 10 to the negative 6. Again, this is the concentration, so it's a molarity. So there's our answer. All right. Um, just another way that we could answer these problems is kind of thinking about all four variables. Again, all four of these variables are going to apply to the same solution. There, it's all one solution sitting in a beaker. Okay, all of these variables, um, hydrogen concentration, pH, pOH, and OH, all describe the same solution. Okay, so the first calculation, um, I think the easiest one is the pH and pOH. I know they need to add to 14. So let's do 14 minus that 2.35, and we get 11.65. So 11.65. And then finally, if we know the pH and we're going back to hydrogen, or if we know the pOH and we're going back to hydroxide, we do 10 to the negative pH. So that's 10 to the negative um, 11.65. Over here, that's 10 to the negative pOH. So that's 10 to the negative 2.35. So let's go back to our calculator and do those two calculations. So 10 raised to the power of negative 11.65. Um, two sig figs, so 2.2 times 10 to the negative 12. 2.2 times 10 to the negative 12 molar. And then over here on the other side for the OH concentration, 10 to the negative 2.35. So 10 raised to the power of negative 2.35. 0.45 will be 0.0045 will be two sig figs. So 
0.0045 molar. Final thing we might want to think about, is it an acid or a base? Again, if you want to know if it's an acid or base, always go back to the pH, because that's the one we're usually most familiar with. It's greater than 7, so this is a base or alkaline solution. Okay, so that's all. Again, a summary of the formulas that you need to know. To calculate pH, it's the negative log of hydrogen concentration. When you reverse this equation and solve for the hydrogen ion concentration, it's 10 to the negative pH. And then we can replace any hydrogen with a hydroxide and get the other set of formulas. So POH equals negative log of hydroxide ion concentration, and hydroxide ion concentration equals 10 to the negative POH. So that's kind of a summary of everything that we've seen. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.